Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. And I have been a very, very grumpy and bad-tempered Rear Admiral Jingles for the last several days because my coffee machine broke down and it had the bad grace to break down right before a bank holiday weekend, which meant that I had to wait four days without real coffee before the new machine was eventually delivered. But it's here now, and I'm topped up with good quality, strong caffeine once again. And I'm feeling vaguely human for the first time since last Friday. Uh, <laughs> I can't begin to tell you what it was like. I didn't realise how badly addicted I was to coffee until I had to go four days with instant... Oh, God, it was horrible. Anyway, <laughs> enough about me and my caffeine addiction. This is Barzy B in the USS Missouri, the Mighty Mo BB-63. Ordered in 1940, completed in 1944 just in time to fight in the battles of Okinawa and Iwo Jima, also served in the Korean War, was uh, placed on the naval reserve list and then reactivated and modernised just in time for the first Gulf War, where I actually had the privilege of seeing her at sea. She was the last battleship to be completed for the US Navy and has now been decommissioned and is currently serving out her days as a museum ship in Pearl Harbor. Here in World of Warships, the Missouri is a Tier 9 Premium Iowa-class battleship. What's that, you say? A premium? Shut up and take my money. Ah, well, there's good news. The Missouri will not cost you a penny. That, unfortunately, is where the good news ends. In order to get your hands on this ship, you're going to have to acquire three quarters of a million free experience. So, yeah... Perhaps my claim that this ship isn't going to cost you a penny was a little bit disingenuous. Unless, of course, you're just going to accumulate free XP the old-fashioned way by playing thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of random battles in World of Warships. You're probably going to be converting some experience in order to acquire that 750,000 free XP. On the other hand, it does mean that unlike other high-tier premium ships, Turpits, we're looking at you, <laughs> you can't just go out, flash your wallet, and play your very, very first game of World of Warships in a high-tier battleship. You have to have some experience of playing the game. You have to have a lot of experience of playing the game in order to get yourself the Mighty Mo. Which does tend to mean that if you see one of these ships in the team lineup, whether it's on your team or the enemy team, it's probably going to be captained by somebody who does at least have a vague idea of what they're doing. Most of the time. So, Barzy B, top tier in the Mighty Mo on the Sea of Fortune map. No pressure, Barzy. You know, there are just tens and tens of thousands of people watching. Now, his initial salvo was fired at a hidden HMS Fiji in that smokescreen up there, but none of the shots from these nine 16-inch guns connected. The Fiji, however, has definitely got some spotting going on because he's starting to put some effective fire into the Edinburgh over there. Barzy's second salvo, again, fired blind into the smoke, does strike home. So, partial cap reset going on there. Unfortunately, the enemy team hold Charlie, and they're just about to cap Alpha, as well as threatening the cap of Bravo. So not a particularly good start for Barzi's team. Barzi coming under fire from a hidden Fletcher in that smoke screen up ahead. Those torpedoes fired by the Fletcher. The Sims up ahead has fired his own torpedoes into the smoke screen in an effort to either sink or drive the Fletcher out of it. And we're going to be seeing more of that Sims player, by the way. At the beginning of the match, he was complaining quite vocally that he'd gotten himself into a Tier 9 game. But he's actually going to be a very, very valuable teammate, which just goes to prove that even if you are bottom tier, especially if you're in a destroyer, you can still have a very positive influence on the outcome of the game. Speaking of destroyers, there's a Z23 over in that smokescreen, as well as that Fletcher around the corner of the island up ahead. So, Barzy pops his radar. And that's fantastic news for the friendly Tash Kent over on the starboard side who was charging into the smokescreen to get the Z-23. Now he can see him, he's got his torpedoes away, and at least one of those torpedoes is going to find its target. Put the Z-23 on the bottom. So with the Z-23 taken out of the picture, Barzi is momentarily unspotted. And as long as the radar is still up, and it's not going to be up for much longer, he's keeping an eye on the location of that Fletcher who is well inside torpedo range. Of course, now that he's not spotted, the French cruiser, the Saint-Louis, is having to fire blind. And that's going to be a bit of a relief for Barzy. And that is when the Fletcher picks the moment to come out and have a go with the torpedoes. Barzy was waiting for him, as was the Sims, who fired his torpedoes into the slot. 
Barzi hits and over-penetrates with three of his 16-inch guns, but it's the secondaries that claim the kill. For his first kill of the game, and the Close Quarters Expert Award. Barzi is not stopping to celebrate, however. He's got the ship in a hard turn over to port, because where there's a Fletcher, there are going to be torpedoes. And yep, there they are, spotted by the Sims, who's laid a very, very nice smoke screen there, which is playing hell with that French cruiser's efforts to light Barzi up from stem to stern with his high explosive shells. Now what we have here is a bit of a good news, bad news situation. The emergency hard turn to port meant that all of those torpedoes missed. Also, the Baltimore and the San Luis over there are concentrating their high explosive spam on the friendly Frederick the Great just up ahead there. Barzi's managed to get a citadel into the enemy Frederick the Great, but it's not enough to put him down. And while that emergency turn to port meant that none of those torpedoes hit, it does mean that Barzi is now at low speed. And broadside on to Fat Freddy over there. And while his first salvo didn't do a huge amount of damage, the second salvo did. And not only that, the friendly Fat Freddy has now been sunk, burnt down by the combined high explosive fire from the Baltimore and the San Luis. And both of those cruisers are now switching their attention to Barzi. And young Barzi is the shy and bashful type. He doesn't like being the centre of attention, so he's getting the hell out of here. He's popped his damage control, put the fire out, he's popped his damage repair to get some health back, but just as the damage control expires, he gets hit and set on fire again. So that one is going to continue to burn. There's a brief lull in the high explosive spam from that French cruiser because Barzi hasn't fired the guns in a while and is undetected, but he can't resist taking a final pop at that Frederick the Great with his rear turret. And Fat Freddy was making a turn to port, just as Barzi fired, which means those shots land straight in the side of the ship, and there's his second kill. Meanwhile, the front turrets have just swung around to get a line of bearing on that New Mexico, who takes a big hit right before those shells land, for his third kill. But the fun and games are not over yet. Okay, he's going to have to continue to endure the high explosive spam from that San Luis over on the port side, because up in front of him he's got another Missouri, an Ismo, a Scharnhorst, a Megami, and I do believe that's a Prinz Eugen. For the moment, most of them are concentrating their fire on the Kuchizov up front, who is basically just begging to be citadel from the side. Barzi fires a salvo from the forward 16-inch guns, and the Prinz Eugen bends over, grabs his ankles, and kisses his ass goodbye. Unfortunately, that Kuchizov up front is not going to last much longer. In fact, he's about to get torpedoed, I shit you not, by the Scharnhorst. <laughs> Which means that's an awful lot of enemy ships uh, who are being forced to choose between Barzi or a Tashkent, who's busy shooting up that Scharnhorst. And the Scharnhorst is going for the Tashkent, so, well, if you're going to give a target like that to these 16-inch guns, bingo, crack and unleashed. Now remember that Sims, there he is, the one who was complaining at the beginning of the game about being in a tier 9 game, and his torpedoes were instrumental in forcing that Fletcher out of the capture point at Bravo. Check out that smokescreen. Tier 7 ship, tier 9 game. Spoiler alert, he finishes third on experience earned. So, yeah, I'm just saying. Meanwhile, Ismo, Missouri, Megami. Barzi is undetected. He's still on fairly low health. Torpedoes in the water, they're being fired by the Sims. You'll also note, by the way, that the Sims didn't immediately hide in the smoke screen as well. He's staying outside the smoke screen and not firing his guns, so he stays undetected while providing spotting on these enemy ships up front for everybody else, most particularly Barzi. Now, who's Barzi going to shoot at? Missouri, heavily angled, that would be a waste of ammunition. Ismo, partially angled, might see some big numbers, might see nothing. Better chance of doing a large amount of damage to the Megami. And, well, yeah, probably a few thousand with one penetration, but the rest were over penetrations. Again, Missouri, very heavily angled. Ismo, reasonably well angled. But the torpedoes are going in, and this poor Missouri. I mean, I said at the beginning that, generally speaking, if you see a Missouri on the team lineup, they're probably going to be a pretty good player. Well, he's screwed and he knows it. It doesn't matter which way he turns now. There are seven ships shooting at him. He's going to get hit by somebody, so he's powering forward in order to use his radar to spot Barzi inside the smokescreen. And he does, but he doesn't survive the encounter. It didn't matter which way he turned the ship at that point. He really could not run away. The second you start turning the ship around, you're going to get broadsided by somebody. And he got finished off by the flooding. 
caused by the torpedoes from the Tashkent. That just leaves the Ismo, who has just run out of friends and is in now pretty much exactly the same situation as that poor Missouri. He's got ships in front, to the left, and to the right, and it doesn't matter which way he turns, he's going to get his belt penetrated by somebody. Barzi's nice and safe inside the smokescreen, but the Ismo is basically a sitting duck for everybody except for Barzi, thanks to the angle that he's showing towards him. The salvo he just fired was aimed high to rate the superstructure and maybe knock one of the gun turrets out, but sadly, all it did was a couple of thousand damage, and with the smokescreen dissipating, Barzi powers forward in an attempt to get around the side of the Ismo and pump some shots into his broadside on the belt. And it's at this point where the Ismo starts playing the numbers. He figures, well, there's more ships to my right than there are in front of me, so I'll point the nose of my ship towards the greatest number of enemy ships. And Barzi doesn't need a second invitation. Boom! <laughs> Headshot. <laughs> Kill number six. And then it's the return of our friend in the San Luis, this time firing on piercing since he had such a perfect broadside to shoot at and doing a substantial amount of damage. And oh look, there's that Fiji again, the first guy that Barzi hit in this match. And he survived this long in a tier 7 cruiser in a tier 9 game and, spoiler alert, he's going to finish as the top experience earner on the enemy team in this match. But this is about as far as his particular adventure is going to go because no British light cruiser on that amount of health is going to survive a 16 inch gun salvo from a Missouri at that kind of range. Kill number seven. Now, that just leaves the San Louis up ahead, the eternal thorn in Barzi's side, and that Megami over there. The Megami's been engaged by destroyers, and, well, that could go either way. This San Louis, he's, well, he's Barzi's problem, very much so. The French Tier 9 cruiser has set Barzi on fire in two locations, so he triggers his damage control now to put the fires out. But he's anticipating that as that guy came around the corner of the island up ahead, He'd fired his torpedoes, and there they are. And the damage control stays active just long enough to ensure that those torpedoes cause no flooding. And because Barzi was basically sitting dead in the water at that point and forcing the San Luis to come to him if he wanted to sail down the other side of the ship and hit him with the torpedoes from the opposite side in order to finish the job, that meant that he had to cross a stretch of open water broadside on to the surviving Frederick, the great on the team, who took great delight in broadsiding him and finishing him off. All of which just means that with seven kills under his belt, there's just the Megami left on the enemy team, and he's down that way somewhere. Might be a good idea if somebody was to start capping, however, because, believe it or not, the team are actually behind on points, because they've only ever held one of the capture points this entire game, and for most of the game they didn't even hold that. And so the surviving cruiser on the team, the Baltimore, is doing exactly that. Unfortunately, Barzi isn't going to be joined on the victor's podium by our friend in the Sims. He did sadly lose his duel with the Megami. But hey, he went down in good company because the Megami took the Tashkent out as well. And the Tashkent is going to finish second on experience earned. Who's first? Well, seriously, <laughs> he's got seven kills to his name. Who do you think is first? It's Barzi, of course. That's not much of a spoiler, really, is it? Anyway, where's that Megami? The Baltimore's capping Bravo. Bozzy's heading up this way as well. I think he's aiming to swing around into Charlie, just in case that Megami doesn't come out to fight. And, well... Oh, the Megami is coming out to fight. I have to admit, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have blamed him if he decided to just cut his losses and run. Because fighting a Frederick the Great, a Missouri, and a Baltimore in a Tier 8 cruiser? Well played to this guy. Bozzy's final salvo of the game. Nine 16 inch shells, and they do look pretty good, don't they? Kill number eight. Uh, <laughs> well, he's just being greedy now, isn't he? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Barzy B in the Mighty Mo. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.